What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Good Old Boys YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be fixing my Yanmar 1500D. It has an issue with a three-point lift. It's not lifting. So we're going to be going over, number one, the noise that the problem is making. Number two, the symptoms of the problem. And number three, the repair to fix the problem. So we're going to talk about a few of the symptoms with the hydraulic lift that you guys wouldn't otherwise know about unless I told you about them. So uh, the number one thing is when the tractor is cold, it will sometimes lift a light implement. Now, once it warms up, it's not going to lift anything. It just stops working. And something that goes along with that is the noise that comes from the hydraulic pump. It's making a really horrible cavitating noise like it's getting a bunch of air in the pump. So now I'm going to show you guys a clip of what that sounds like. And try this out. Okay. And you can hear it now. That's what the three point trying to lift. With the knot trying to lift, that's how it sounds. So listen closely, it's almost kind of like a whining sound. Is there enough hydraulic fluid in the rear end of the tractor? Let's check. Wipe it off. Take it back in, pull it out, check it, and same result. Plenty of fluid on the stick. And the next thing we decided to do was replace the hydraulic pump on the Yanmar, thinking that this would fix the problem. So I was curious what was inside the original pump. So I actually tore it down. I'm gonna show you guys what's on the inside of it. Now there is a keyed adapter that fits on the pump that you do have to swap to the new pump. So keep that in mind as well and I'll show you that in the next couple clips. So we have the hydraulic pump drive adapter off of there. You guys can see it's just keyed. So this is what it looks like with the cover off. We just have some seals and then you can see the gear shafts. Now, I did want to show you guys there is some play. So if I hold this one shaft still, and rotate the input shaft here. You guys can see how much play there is. A gear pump like this, especially a Japanese. I don't know, it's hard to say if this was, that was quick. Okay. You can see, but there was just a slight little bit of play when they're in this unit or as pieces. One more thing here, I think you guys can see the play a little bit better here. So again, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that or not, but you can see there's definitely some play between the gears. Hydraulic pump came in the mail. So real quick, we'll do a comparison here between the new and old. So uh, I did go with a cheaper hydraulic pump by $100 compared to the rest. And uh, from what I can see, this is the same exact pump as all the rest. So, you know, I, I uh, you know, wasn't going to spend the extra $100 for the same exact thing, right? So this, of course, we have to transfer over to the new pump here. So we're going to leave this loose until we get the hydraulic pump primed. Well. Alright guys, so one step we don't want to skip before hooking an implement up to this thing is just to check the oil real quick. Not a big deal, so see, hopefully you guys can see that. So what I do is I wipe the stick off, as you should, 
put the oil stick back in here and then see what we got for a reading so i'm not sure if you guys can see that or not but it looks like it's just to this line and on this thing it should be between these two lines here so we need to add a little bit Pull her out. And it looks like we're well full. And now it's time to go hook up an implement and test this thing out. So unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of hooking an implement up and testing out the three-point hitch. So basically, what happened was the new hydraulic pump did not fix the problem. All right, guys, so we're working back on the Yanmar today. I'm not sure where exactly we left off, but unfortunately, the new pump didn't fix the issue so today we're going to be tearing into the rear end i'm not going to make this video too tedious i'm just going to tear into it hopefully i'll find something and i'll update you guys as we go along here so we went ahead we took the fenders off we have the top kind of control valve off of here whatever you guys want to call this thing all right guys so we're looking at the three point actuation valve that i showed you guys we took off earlier so i just wanted to show you guys what all is in this thing i think we may have already found the issue uh we are missing a few parts that are supposed to be in this thing so hopefully this is all the problem is so looking a little closer into the three point hydraulic control valve we were obviously missing a few parts we were missing a check ball an o-ring and a washer so in the next clip you guys are going to see us replacing all those components and then the valve was sticking a little bit so i had to go in there with some 3000 grit sandpaper and just polish down the valve so it would slide freely all right guys so i think i found a couple solutions to a couple of our problems so number one uh well first of all i did find a ball that would fit and work well i believe this is a 5 16 inch ball bearing ball if i remember correctly so that takes care of one of the problems we had a missing check ball and now that problem is fixed all right the number two problem here i was looking on some forums uh, and it actually looks like this little valve is supposed to be able to freely slide all the way in here right now we're having a bottoming out issue so i tried to show you guys earlier on the camera <clears throat> This little guy has a little lip or edge around it. I believe that's probably from this spring pushing on this thing uh, continuously and this not having a proper washer here, uh, which also looks like that's one of the things that's missing. So right now we're gonna take and uh, carefully file this down. It slides all the way in there before we can only get it into about here and now it's freely moving in and out there. So that's exactly what we want. Next up, we're missing an O-ring. So we're just gonna pop one of these on here. And we'll call that good. Earlier in the video, we talked about this spring not seating evenly on this little valve here. So what we've gone ahead and done is found a perfect size washer for this application. Basically, that's gonna slip right on here like this. We'll see if we can relieve this valve. And then basically when this spring comes into it, it's gonna be pressing on that valve a whole lot flatter, just like so. So I put everything back together, bled it, and I've also went ahead and tested it off camera. Unfortunately, um, the pump is still cavitating. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and check is the hydraulic filter. So that's gonna be, from my understanding, under this uh, supply line or um, low pressure pickup line for the pump. Um, so it's gonna be behind this big bolt. There's four more screws here and a cap and the filter should be behind that. So guys, in the next couple video clips, we have found our main problem. The filter I figured out was put in here backwards. It's kind of a big deal. So the flow was really, really being restricted. So that was the entire problem. The filter was in there backwards. You have one end of the filter that's open, the other end is more or less closed with a screened end. And so with the filter in there backwards, the pump just cannot get enough fluid. Now, unfortunately, the filter had seen better days. It had been kind of torn and ripped apart from all the years of use and abuse. A mesh filter. 
So we ended up having to buy a new filter. All right guys, so our new filter came in today. Pretty excited, everything looks pretty legit about it. Uh so if you guys are in the same situation and you're looking to buy a filter for your tractor, there's not really many options out there. I only found actually one option and that's from Southern Farm Equipment, if I'm remembering the name correctly. And you have two options. So you can go on eBay, which you don't wanna do that. The filter's way overpriced on eBay. Or you can go to their actual website and buy it off there for like $30 less. And they have PayPal and all the secure ways to check out. So there's no reason not to buy it off their website. Let's go throw it in the tractor. The important point that I wanna make is the open end goes in this side with the opening for the pickup for the hydraulic pump. And goes in the socket. Take a close look, open end towards the side that's the pickup line. When you look in here, it should be open all the way to the other side. You should be able to see the spring on the inside of the mesh. So the Inmar is all put back together. It's back on the ground. As you guys know, we used RTV on the oil filtered caps. Once our TV is dry, we'll put the oil back in the tractor and give it a test. All right, guys, so we have the oil in our Yanmar. Only thing we have left to do is hook up a blade to this. We've actually got quite a bit of snow on our driveway, so uh, we're gonna test the three point with the blade, and I'm fairly confident this thing's fixed. So let's go hook up to the blade, and then in the next shot, you guys will see me scraping the driveway clean. That's the end of the story with the Yanmar. For the most part, the problem is the backwards filter. Now, there were a few other issues that we fixed here and there, put some new O-rings in a few different spots, but the Yanmar had to lift the plow probably a couple hundred times to get it that clean. We had a lot of frozen on snow. So needless to say, the three-point hitch is finally working and I couldn't be happier. So that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out that description box below, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. Woo.